I like gorgeous people who love to scrap. It's Val from Australia. I've got this little um, box slash chest that I have found at the uh, thrift store for six dollars, and um, somebody's you know somebody has started off putting this together, but um, probably didn't end up finishing it or. That's all they were planning on doing. But anyway, I benefit from um, what they were partially doing. And <laughs> I get to do the fun part, which is decorated. Uh, it's actually quite large. Uh, maybe 35 centimetres by 20 centimetres. Um, and it's just made out of um, timber, as you can see. It's nice and good quality timber. It's not chipboard or anything. And... Uh, as you can see on the sides here, it's got you know screws already on the sides to keep it together. So it's really really sturdy, and compared to my hand, it's really large. So I'm planning on altering this, and if I'm not going to keep it for my scrap room, um, I might you know take it upstairs to my bedroom, and once I do it up really nice, depending on how it turns out, uh, I might keep it in my bedroom and put jewelry or stuff in it because it's actually got lots of. Um, room here. Uh, drawers are quite deep and all timber again and it has three little um, smaller drawers up here also and they all come out and again lots and lots of room here uh, once I finish decorating this. So um, I've made heaps of shabby chic products so I'll probably be looking to do um, like uh, a vintage theme with this particular box and I'm planning on using the um, the romantic papers on this particular box so see how it turns out and um, I haven't got a tripod so I will probably just be um, filming um, the process uh, of altering this box as I go along so uh, just bear with me and um, my editing skills are not good whatsoever so I've never edited anything before in my whole life so I'll probably just be taking you know uh, vids of parts of um, altering this box and I will eventually upload it and hopefully, you know, you all get to see what I've done to this box. And stay tuned for all the parts coming and um, once it's finished, I hope you all like it and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back. I have finished painting the outline of um, my box here and I've um, went with a dark brown sort of colour to coordinate with the um, paper from the Le Romantic here and um, as you can see on the edges it's got a, a really sort of burnt sort of color brown on the edges and um, this particular part I torn around the edges and then I went over with the uh, vintage photo distressing ink so I'm planning on using this at the top there and so to coordinate these two, two, two colors I went with this um, burnt amber color and I've just um, bought these particular colours at my local craft store and it's just called Burnt Amber and this particular colour is quite dark and I also use Burnt Sienna which is a little bit lighter so uh, to get the base colour as you can see here this slightly darker this particular colour here I didn't want to go really really dark because Burnt Amber is really dark so I mixed Burnt Amber as well with a little bit of Burnt Sienna and that just gave me a little bit lighter colour um, which is this particular colour and then I went over with the burnt sienna in random places so just to highlight uh, different areas of the box in um, uh, in different tones so just to give it a bit of texture there as you can see uh, this is the, the first colour and then I went over with this colour and then to top it all off I went over with a, a gold metallic paint as you can see on the on the edge here in random places see the gold highlights there uh, on here and as you can see on here also and in various random places and I've painted all the uh, all the drawers also and as you can see the gold shimmering there I will be covering this with paper so you won't see much of it whatsoever so and the inside I've painted the inside and this one I painted all the sides but I didn't paint all of them on all the sides because I heard that you know once you painted it it's really hard to um, uh, take them out. So this is the feet that I will be using and I've painted over with the um, burnt amber colour and then lightly over with the burnt sienna and then the third coat which is the gold and you can see the gold shimmering there. So uh, this is the um, this is the large drawer that uh, goes onto the, the middle shelf there 
and I've painted with the same matching colour and then went over with the gold. So I'll be, next I'll be covering it with paper and I'll do another vid once this is finished. I'll see you guys soon. Okay guys, I'd like to show you how um, I've mod podged the um, uh, vintage music note onto the um, the drawers here. Uh, I've decorated the box already, but um, I've got this part that I'd like to show you how I uh, have uh, done this particular part. So uh, what I do is just dip this particular brush into the mod podge and then just apply that onto the box here. Just a nice inner layer like that. Uh, the Mod Podge also act, act as glue also. And then once I've um, popped glue or the Mod Podge onto the box, I will um, do the same onto the music vintage music note here. Then it's a pretty messy procedure as you can see. And then just position it where I would like it also, which is right onto here. And then just I just usually just press it down to get all the air bubbles out and just position it properly so that. Um, it's not crooked or anything and then once that's done just go over with your Mod Podge and then seal it down it also helps for you to run I usually just run my fingers like that to make sure that any air bubbles that gets trapped in there comes out it does get a bit messy but uh, it does turn out pretty good so once I've done that I will move on to uh, this particular side here so just get more Mod Podge just apply that on an even an even layer onto the drawer here and then just pop some onto the back of the music note just a good generous amount so that it covers it and then just pop that down onto here evenly so once that's down just go over with the Mod Podge again Okay, I have cut a strip already of how um, I want to decorate this particular part. So um, I've pre-cut everything and torn all the bits and pieces of the edge, curled a little bit here and down this particular corner. Um, just cut this little slit here, which goes into here. That's the um, for, that's for the drawers when you pull out. And um, I've uh, you know just pre-cut it this to the, uh, the size that I wanted it, and I'm also will be popping in some um, lace also. So I've marked exactly where I have um, exactly where I want to position my um, lace. So I'm just gonna pop in a layer of um, Mod Podge there that also acts as glue. Just gonna stick that down on that particular side. And then I will do the same on the other side here also. Bit of Mod Podge onto there and then stick down my lace part which I have got ready already. Down like that. Um, I could do the rest here also. Make sure that sticks down carefully. Okay. And once we get to about there, I will put Mod Podge all over this particular part because I will be um, gluing or sticking down the the other the top layer of the designer paper which I have showed you. So put on a lot of glue onto here. I won't be covering this part because the the paper is gonna not gonna not gonna cover that part. So I'm just gonna pop the glue um, the Mod Podge where um, it's uh, going to cover so that it sticks on properly. So just a nice nice coat. Just be generous with it so it sticks properly. And then I will put a layer of um, Mod Podge on the back of uh, the designer paper also like so just a nice even layer on here and also on this little corner here because I want that to be durable and on here also and then once I've done that just position it in place which would be about there And about there also so just got a bit peeping out 
You can see all this white, which is the Mod Podge, but once it dries, everything just goes clear. So I want to curl that back, so I'm just going to hold that for a few seconds, and that's just going to curl back into there. And I'm just going to put the layer of Mod Podge on top, and then I will press it down to make sure that all the air bubbles that's trapped inside does go away, and so that it does dry properly. So put Mod Podge all over, because I do want it to be durable and adhere properly so glue that down twist that and then once I've got the Mod Podge on I go over with my fingers like that just so that if there's any air bubbles trapped inside they will come out and then once I've done that and know that it's glued down or stuck down properly I will just go over with the, um, the brush again to make sure that it's all nice and smooth And once the Mod Podge dries, this will all be clear and nice and glossy. So you won't see any of the white marks that you see on here now. It would all be really nice and dry. It's just going to pop a bit of more uh, Mod Podge underneath here. Just so that that dries properly. Okay. Just helping it um, stay curled down. Just by holding on to it like that. Okay. That seems to be fine right now. It's all in place of how I would like it. I'm just going to use a heat gun and speed this up a little bit. Excuse me. My husband's just helping me out while I record this. <laughs> seems about right now so I'm just going to leave that dry naturally by itself now I'm just speeding up the process because I wanted this to curl so that's why I used the heat gun just to um, speed up the process of the Mod Podge and if you're not careful you can you know as you did see before me trying to get my fingers off get glued down but I wanted that to stick down uh, with the Mod Podge down here so that sort of worked and now I just have to wait for it to glue or uh, to dry naturally and it's starting to dry and once it's dry completely all this would be clear and that particular side uh, of the uh, drawers will look really good. So um, thanks for watching. I'll show you when it's completely dry and once I've uh, finished this, this particular process. Thanks for watching.